What's going on everyone? Austin John Plays here and today we're going to be taking a look at analyzing the brand new Pokemon Sword and Shield trailer for the expansion pass. <laughs> Come on, Dayquil. I'm still sick, by the way, but we got analyze the trailer. I don't think anyone could have predicted we're getting paid DLC for Pokemon instead of a second game, which also raises the question of what's gonna happen come the end of the year. I don't know. Also, we're getting a mystery dungeon remake. So it comes out the same time as Animal Crossing. So Nintendo's fighting Pokemon, that's cool. First of all, Pokemon Sword has its own expansion pass and Pokemon Shield has its own expansion pass. Each expansion pass is $30 and is gonna cover all the DLC for that game. Think of it like the fighter pass for Super Smash Brothers and you're gonna get all the updates going forward and all the new content. If you own Sword and Shield, it's gonna cost you $60 for both, but if you only own one, it's only gonna be $30. They then go on to talk about how previously there were a second iteration or a perfect iteration of a game or a remix version whatever you want to call it and instead of doing that going forward for this game they're gonna be doing paid DLC which makes sense the only weird part is it was nice to start off with a fresh adventure with like the remix version like ultra Sun and ultra moon but now you're gonna be able to use your current save data going into the new game so what, you're just going to start with level 100 Pokemon? There's probably going to be like internet made challenges of, hey, uh, start with a level five starter again. In one of the first shots here, we see in the bottom right, a Zapdos that's inspired some yellow trainer art, a wing of Moltres over here. Over here, we're led to see the psychic rival for Pokemon Shield. And then right in the center of the frame, we have a very large tree and we could also see Articuno over here. And next frame is a whole bunch of artwork that we're actually going to see in much more detail later on. We can see images of Reggie Steel, Reggie Ice, and down here a brand new Reggie that is yet to be revealed. We then get to see a Talon Flame design on a computer as well as a brand new design of a Rodon bike. Talon Flame is not in the Galar decks and it's not one of the 35 supported Pokemon, so it's interesting to see it showing up right here. The Expansion Pass Part 1 takes place in a different area and the Expansion Pass Part 2 takes place in a different area as well. Right now we are seeing artwork from Part 1, the Isle of Armor. Once the camera zooms out, we can actually see the Psychic Rival right here. We can see images of what I believe is the Poison Rival, the Old Champion, a close-in of G-Max Rillaboom's face, a zoom-out of G-Max Intellion. And then over on the right-hand side, we can see Galarian Slowpoke, an artwork of G-Max Blastoise and G-Max Venusaur, which we'll see in more detail shortly. First, right here, we are led to see Galarian Slowpoke. We do not know its typing yet, although we see what's either a fire or poison type move later on, so I'm not really too sure what it is. We're also shown that it evolves into question mark. Well, it's actually cut off here, and then later on, you'll see it scrubbed out of frame. But we find out later that it can evolve into Galarian Slowbro with an item from the first part of the DLC, and it evolves into Galarian Slow King with an item from the second part of the DLC. We see a whole bunch of different styles of artwork for clothing for both the male and female trainers. New hairstyles, new hair colors, a lot of new haircuts, the champion's hat under brims, new Rodon bike colors and designs. And then we're seeing Volcarona on a laptop. Volcarona is not in the Galarian Pokedex and it's not one of the supported Pokemon. Uh, however, this leads us to believe that it's going to be available as part of the expansion passes as well as Kingdra, who uh, has a lot of artifacts on him. DDD, Lycanroc, their original artwork just taped to a notebook. Yeah, that wasn't made specifically for this direct presentation. And then we're seeing artwork of Gigantamax Venusaur, who its petal has completely overgrown its entire body and its leaves are now pushed down like a bowl cut. That's nice. And then we see Gigantamax Blastoise, who its shell has become absolutely enormous, armored, and has many, many, many cannons coming out of it. It's now turned into an entire fortress. And then we're seeing the Galarian starters, and then we're going to be seeing their Gigantamax forms. Rillaboom grows much, much larger vines out of its body, and its wood drum becomes an entire drum set to which its 
leaf arms actually play the different drums, the cymbals, the toms, and everything. Cinderus grows giant long ears and then is standing on top of a giant pyro ball. And Intellion, uh, I think that's its tail. Its tail is now super duper long and has water shooting up it. And oh, I get it. He's on top of a building and he's a sniper. It makes sense because that's that's his whole gimmick. And then only for a split second, we see a very, very important thing. This is an image from the first part of the DLC, and we can clearly see that the camera is completely controllable in the same style as the wild area. We see a beach, we see a different part of a beach that has dens that are shooting out into the distance, we see a building in the background. They go on later to talk about that the entire area you are going to be able to control the camera. We're then treated to an almost identical trailer that confused a lot of people who were watching it live, but the trailer is slightly altered. Now this area is going to be showing off part of the second part of the DLC. We see artwork of the inside of an old rundown church and for some reason we're seeing this item being circled. We're treated to whoever that guy is. Super snowy outfits for the trainers. Reggie Ice shown in front of this large cold looking ruins. We'll go with ruins. And then in the top right we see artwork of what has the Reggie dots on it and it looks super cold and it looks bundled up like this. A sandy ruin, very similar to the icy ruin, and we have Reggie Rock right here. And we see Reggie Steel in another ruin. And then we are also seeing a cube-like box in the top corner. No info on what that is yet. And then we're treated to this ruin that has two different colors going down the middle, which is really confusing. When comparing the dots, one right here is actually very similar to Reggie Gigas, because Reggie Gigas has three dots down and then it has four dots in a diamond pattern this one has one dot down three dots in a diamond pattern and then one dot on this side and one we could presume on the other side so i'm led to believe that this has something to do this shrine has something to do with the combination of the three reggies that we just saw but not reggie gigas or possibly galarian reggie gigas and here we go possibly galarian reggie gigas we can see that this pattern of dots represents the left of the two that we just saw on that ruin now what this is i have no idea it does not represent a giant earth or metal based titan it could be something completely different going on all together and then we're seeing this which now we see is the dots on the right side okay and this one looks a little bit more like uh, uh an actual earth-based titan but it, what are these this is like a, oh it's a charizard skull or something oh if you were to take a giant charizard skull and give it some more crazy stuff on it and then split it open that's that design, which in a way kind of reminds me of the Tapus a little bit. Huh, that's neat. We're seeing another image of Galarian Slowpoke, and then a crossed out image of what we could presume would be Galarian Slow King. And once it zoomed out, we see a little bit more of it, and it almost looks like Cloyster went onto its head, but again, it's literally crossed out. We see more trainer customization options based on the second part of the DLC. Just like the first part of the DLC where we saw a fletchling on a computer, uh, we're led to some more. Here we see Aurorus on a computer screen, Nidorino, Sfeel, right, that's Sfeel, and Garchomp. Then we're led to this. We see images of the three legendary birds and altered forms of all three of them. This one we're led to believe is Galarian Moltres, Galarian Articuno, and Galarian Zapdos. The Moltres looks just absolutely vicious. This could be a Galarian version, or this could be a Gigantamax version. We're then shown similar concepts for Galarian or Gigantamax Articuno. I'm leaning more toward these are Galarian forms just because we don't see the overabundance of purple around this one. And then we see Galarian Zapdos, which actually looks a lot like a Roadrunner. And it just looks, yeah, if you took Zapdos and made it into the, the, the Roadrunner, meet me. Then we're treated to the final splash screen, the Isle of Armor. And the third trailer. 
which a lot of people thought this was recycled content as well. After they then chose to recycle over a minute of footage, we then see all of the Galarian Canto birds around this very large tree, followed immediately by gameplay of the trainer at a train station. And then more importantly, the trainer approaching this large ruin that has these two new Reggie symbols on it. We see approaching the large snowy church and then nothing else and we're just treated to the crown tundra. The only thing on here that I'm not recognizing from any of the footage before is this logo right here, which kind of looks like, a, I don't know, a brontosaurus. And we're showing a side-by-side -side of part one and part two of the DLC. We're then treated to some really special footage of the brand new legendary Pokemon, chilling out in the middle of the desert by himself. The legendary Pokemon starts off as a little boy, and then the little boy evolves into the sword inspired version or the shield inspired version the sword inspired version and the shield inspired version have their own different forms of the same pokemon with different typings however it is still the same one pokemon and then we're treated to this thing that is a, another brand new legendary pokemon uh with triforces on it those are triforces that could not be more of a triforce if they tried why this baby elk has triforces i'm not too sure part one of the expansion pass the isle of armor is going to be for june 2020 and part two the crown tundra is going to be for fall 2020. keep in mind that fall goes literally a week before christmas it is possible that the Pokemon company is not planning to release a new game for this holiday season. Instead, it's just going to be part two, The Crown Tundra. It seems weird, but they could do that. They then go on to explain again that Pokemon Sword has its own expansion pass and Pokemon Shield has its own expansion pass. If you play both copies on one Switch, you do need to buy the expansion pass for Sword and the expansion pass for Shield. Some Pokemon and characters appear differently between the versions, which they'll go on to explain later that your rival in Sword is a Poison type user and your rival in Shield is a Psychic type user. We're then treated to something really important. We see that Omori and Masuda are the producer and the director of Pokemon Sword and Shield, right? We now get to see that Tani is the director of the Sword and Shield expansion pass. That leads us to believe that Tani is taking over this in the same way that the B team always does the second version of the game, like they did Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. Tani is now doing expansion pass, which leads Masuda and Omori to work on 2021 project. Or 2020, we don't know. Diamond Pro Remix confirmed. Part one, the Isle of Armor. Part two, the Crown Tundra. The Isle of Armor consists of a very large, wild area controlling style area. And part of that is going to be this dojo, where you could get some pretty cool dojo outfits, apparently. We now have a new sensei. His name is Mustard. He was also Leon's mentor. If you're playing Pokemon Sword, your rival is going to be Clara, who's a poison type user. And if you're playing with Pokemon Shield, your rival is Avery, this clown of a psychic type user. You're not going to compete to bead, that's for sure. We then get more information on the legendary Pokemon of this game, or sorry, of this expansion pass. Its name is Cub Fu, and pfft, it is adorable. Your mentor Mustard is going to be gifting you this Pokemon. Once you complete your training, Cub Fu is able to evolve, possibly with an item, or maybe they'll just code it in that once you're done with your training, it's able to evolve. Urshifu has two different forms. For Pokemon Sword, it is a fighting and dark type, and it looks very physically offensive. For Pokemon Shield, it is a fighting and water type, and it looks to be, I'm gonna guess, uh, especially offensive. Urshifu also has a Gigantamax form. Here we have some images of Urshifu's fighting dark type Gigantamax form and Urshifu's fighting water type Gigantamax form. You know what? I don't think they've actually said that it's exclusive to the version of the game. So it might not be. The color schemes totally lead us to believe that it is. The colors, the covers are shield magenta and sword is blue. Oh, I might have that reversed. You might have the dark one being shield and the water one being sword. It might not be that. 
it, you might be able to choose. We have no idea yet. We're then treated to some more information and details as far as the Gigantamax forms of the Golarian starters. It goes on to say that your special partner Pokemon will be able to Gigantamax. Now that's a little unclear. As of right now, we're told that if a Pokemon doesn't have the Gigantamax trait, it can't get the Gigantamax trait. However, with the DLC, that might change for your partner Pokemon, or it might be any of the starter Pokemon might be able to get that trait. We're not really too sure yet. We're also getting some more tutor moves, which is nice because pff, we definitely have enough TMs and TRs. We're getting Apricorns that can be made into Pokeballs. So it's possible that in the Isle of Armor, there's going to be Apricorn trees, not just berry trees, that drop Apricorns that you can make into Pokeballs. Maybe Kurt will return, that'd be nice. And an experience charm to earn more experience points for your team. <laughs> because the experience candy isn't enough. We also get a whole bunch of new fashions, including right here, we can definitely see some more recognizable looks, that's for sure. New designs and styles for the Rodon bike, which is good because the current option to just change color isn't enough. No information on Venusaur or Blastoise's Gigantamax forms, however, they're definitely shown off right here. The whole theme of Isle of Armor is growth, and the whole theme of the second part of the DLC is going to be exploration. Which leads me to believe that part one is smaller and more story-based driven, and part two is going to be larger and have more of a expansive wild area sort of feel. We're told that in the Crown Tundra there are small towns and communities. We're told that a certain person is going to make you the head of their exploration team because you as an 11 year old child seem totally qualified for that. But in this shot we can clearly see Articuno in the background. Over here looks to be the silhouette of Moltres and Zapdos is nowhere to be seen. They say that you're going to be able to explore inside of Pokemon dens not just go into a den for a battle. Inside of dens is actually an area that you can walk around and explore, which is interesting. The Crown Tundra introduces us to Calyrex, the Triforce Elk. Totally what I'm calling it, Triforce Elk. It is a psychic and grass type. We're also teased as far as a new form of co-op play. It says that you and friends can go into the dens, which are underground, and explore. So this sounds like they might be taking the idea of a raid to a new level, that you would be entering the den with up to three friends. You're that in this single instance of a den where you would go in, maybe there would be wild Pokemon in there or challenges that you have to do, or you could participate in, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, two two-on-two, three-on-three, or four-on-four battles. And then at the very end of the den is going to be a Pokemon that you're going to be competing against in a max raid battle. It's possible that these very special dens may lead us to the new legendary Pokemon and or returning legendary Pokemon. Then they go on to talk about a whole bunch of returning Pokemon, legendary Pokemon, that you're going to be able to encounter in these den explorations. Which, just like we saw with Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, had a chance for you to use the Ultra Wormholes to do all of the legendary Pokemon. And Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, while flying around, you had a chance to encounter a whole bunch of legendary Pokemon as well. We can see Ho-Oh, Lugia, the Roaming Trio. We can see the Weather Trio. We can see the Lake Guardians, the Time and Space Boys. We can see the uh, Weather Cloud Boys. Uh, Reshiram and Zekrom, are they Time and Space? I don't know. I skipped 4th and 5th Gen. The 6th Gen Legendary the Tapus, the seventh gen legendaries. Legends return! What's weird though is that some of these Pokemon are currently coded in the game. Like Solgaleo, Lunala, the Kiram trio are already coded in the game, so I don't. I, I'm just confused. It says that brand new legendary Pokemon are waiting to be found while showing the Reggies and the Kanto birds. It doesn't specifically say new forms or new Galarian forms of these Pokemon. It also does not talk about if you do not have the online service, if you can do the co-op. 
you would believe that if you did, you would be able to go in there with NPCs and hopefully they don't have a soul rock who uses cosmic power. They also added 100 plus new ways to customize your look with clothing items and hairstyles with the two parts of the DLC. I love that you can make yourself look like Marnie and the chairman. <laughs> and here we're treated to the eyewear from Lissandre from Pokemon X and Y and hang on, I had to look this up. Gets this from Team Plasma. Again, didn't play fourth or fifth gen. I probably should. And it also looks like you're finally going to be able to get the sponsorships on your outfit, which I've been hoping that was a thing since the game first started. I love how the Game Freak logo is on there as well. Being able to do challenges and get all these sponsorships on your outfit definitely want that as an option. It also sounds like once you're done with the main story, you're going into the post game, which is these areas, and then there's going to be a post 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 story or post 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 thing to do, which says a new battle challenge. This could be like a new battle tree, battle tower, battle frontier sort of thing. And then they use some very interesting language right here that I'm just going to play this back in real time. The Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra areas themselves are actually key examples does that mean that they're planning more DLC expansions? Oh, now we see the same area, except now it has the Galarian Slowpokes everywhere. Both part one of the DLC and part two of the DLC, the separate islands, are continuous maps. So think of how in Breath of the Wild, you would just go from the main area into a building. It sounds like that's what they're doing with this. Not that the wild area is its own separate segregated area, and then you would enter a town or route that's, you know, a, a fixed map. Right outside of the dojo, you have Max Raid Dens. Now we're getting to the semantics of things, that they're adding 200 plus Pokemon from the Pokemon past games into this. So we have, what, 340-ish old Pokemon that's going to be brought up to 540 of the previous 800. Still not all the Pokemon, but a large number of them have been brought over to this game, brought over to the, the to the expansion passes. Further makes me believe that there's going to be a part three and a part four, and the part three and part four might just have, <laughs> might just have, um, the, the rest of them. Now, without the expansion pass, if you do not buy this $30 DLC, you are going to get a free update to Pokemon Sword and Shield that is going to allow you to trade with the expansion pass people and be able to bring those Pokemon in. They're also talking about Pokemon Home. So without the expansion pass, with Pokemon Home, you will be able to transfer your Pokemon from Pokemon Go, Let's Go, and Bank into Sword and Shield and have all of those Pokemon, currently the 340, and then after those updates roll out, the 640, the 540 returning Pokemon. This is the graphic explaining the thing that I just said. Pokemon Home comes out next month. More details on Pokemon Home coming soon. It sounds like the Max Raid Dens are going to be changing. Expect a Wild Area update from Austin John Plays later today, or tomorrow, whenever that official information is released. Also, later today, there's going to be a software update that has a cutscene in the Wedgehurst Station, where you're going to meet the rival of the DLC, and they are going to gift you a Galarian Slowpoke. We're then given information how Galarian Slowpoke evolves. You cannot evolve it at this point in time. You do need the item from the DLC. Today, you're going to be able to pre-purchase the expansion, which means that as soon as it's released, you can absolutely just download it. The weird part is, is that the, the stream was cut off, which leads me to believe that they're going to be updating the pause screen that has the option for you to download the expansion pass. That's most likely going to be in today's update that gives you the Galarian Slowpoke. Great, again, it's $30, you can pre-purchase it today. This video is long enough as it is, it's over, bye.